When I was 12, I lost my mother, and I loved my mother, but I didn't quite know what that meant yet. I remember being a child, so distracted by this magical, vibrant world, thrust into it without an understanding of the task that I would be taking on. Unconscious and unaware of the fact that life was approaching me so steadily and so forcefully, somewhere over yonder, a distance that I couldn't have known how to care to comprehend. And then she died. And like a thin white fog, I was caressed by death himself. So gently as to never realize that it would pervade and pervert all life that follows. You'd never know that this little boy had lost the very woman that wrest his soul from the other side who cradled it and converted it into a small and bug-eyed creature. No, I didn't cry. I didn't weep for years. I was paralyzed as the brick wall of existence met my front bumper. No, I didn't cry. I just played Minecraft. When my grandpa's dog died, I played Minecraft. And when my papa died, I played Minecraft. I don't remember the night, how metaphorical it feels to click New World and start from the beginning again, just without her. Sometimes I'm thankful that I didn't go through this when I was older. Sometimes I wish I did. I always wish it never happened at all. I didn't grow up right. I had a lot of problems. Emotional scars that were seared so far into my heart that most couldn't tell they were there. I still have a lot of problems. I can't believe you're not more broken than you are. You're doing so well despite everything. These are things that I would hear that I would clutch. Convincing myself that this world that would exist to sabotage me was something that I was strong enough to resist. That this pallid plain was actually a good place, full of loveliness and sweet kindness. That the hand I was dealt was only a test. That it was only a lesson to grow me in a way that God had planned. I was the kid that rose like a phoenix and survived hell at the precipice of life. The hero that would share his strength with those who couldn't bear it. I was the stoic, the young man who, against all odds, didn't give in to the mindless suffering that life condemned me with. I would show everybody and myself that, no matter what was thrown at me, I could take it. In reality, suffering like no other. The person that was in my mind when I was alone wasn't around. He was far off in the distance, curled into a calcified husk drowning in a frozen river of tears. The people that were supposed to provide the love that coddles and attempts to cure the pain of this loss failed me miserably and imposed even more emotional suffering. The summer of 2013 was the summer when I didn't see a soul outside of my paltry family. I did nothing but play video games. The only thing that I knew could interrupt the sheer horror of my existence up until that point. Partway through my high school career was when I was lying in my bed, and like a cold grip around my heart, I started to feel the fire suppression system fail. The buildup had become so intense that I sobbed and screamed into my pillow, releasing a metric ton of emotion that I had hidden away for years. I missed my mother. I missed the way she held me. I missed how she cared about the games I liked and how intensely absurd and funny she was. I miss how she was so optimistic, even up until the point where her body was so gaunt that she couldn't lift her arms, and how all she wanted was to see us grow up and live. I can't get the image out of my head and I don't think I ever will. As it happens, my mind began to flower as I entered teenhood. I transferred schools and began my long and arduous high school career. I was so emotionally stunted that I had an extremely embarrassing time associating with the normal kids. 
As it were, I was the kid whose mother died, and it seemed that I couldn't escape that fact at any moment. I was so mentally numbed that, looking back, I didn't even realize that people were bullying me. I see ancient posts on Instagram with comments about my confidence or lack thereof. I don't remember most of my young life. My mind has been in recovery mode since the day I felt like I became conscious. My four white walls, bedside table, and coverless duvet accentuated the fact that I had no perceivable identity. I liked games and I wore the same clothes every day. I never asked for anything from anybody. All of the things I was supposed to learn were never taught to me. The cascade of horror from my mother's death until 2017 is still mortifying to think about. But then, like light at the end of the tunnel, I met my best friend. The one other creature on this planet that I thank the universe for every day. You see, up until this point I hadn't really connected with another person. There was always this wall, until my new friend unlocked something. A latent potential, a sense of purpose, or an endless comfort that I never had. A home away from home. I wasn't alone anymore. Fast forward years to this very present day and I am a new person. Still broken in so many ways, but repairable. I have something to work with. I spent the last couple years trying to figure it out. All the people that knew they were artists or sporty or academics in high school got to figure something out about themselves, but I just had too little space in my head to really figure that out. And I'll tell you, it's difficult to do. I am largely independent. I rely on family of friends to give me the feeling of family. But life is hard, and that's something that I've learned and had to learn. And in a lot of ways, I'm thankful that I got to learn about that when I was younger, because I think I'm a good person now, and I want love and happiness for all the creatures on this planet. Because despite all the good things you see, this world is pretty nasty. I am just one example of the people in this world that have gone through something traumatic. Everybody has gone through something traumatic. And the one thing that I can rely on is that we're not alone. Enjoy this life for what it is. Because there's no reason that we should do anything to hurt each other. That's all my purpose is. It's to move people and love people. I want you to do something good for yourself, for someone else, and also hug your mothers, and your fathers. Take care. I missed my mother. I missed the way she held me. I missed how she was so optimistic even up until the point where her body was so gaunt that she couldn't lift her arms. And how all she wanted was to see us grow up and live. I can't get the image out of my head. I don't think I will ever. Grief. I've learned, is really just love. It's all the love you want to give but cannot. All that unspent love gathers up in the corners of your eyes, the lump in your throat, and in that hollow part of your chest. Grief is just love with no place to go. Jamie Anderson I could chalk this whole video up to one final crescendo of I am well and I am fixed and we are moving on. But unfortunately, life doesn't work like that. Life is a trail of deaths. And once death becomes something you understand, there's a comfort in it. And I'm not even at the point where I can truly really explain why there's a comfort. As far as all the hard things that come with it, I still deal with them. 
even despite, you know, corking it with a happy ending there, it, uh, it still hurts. So if you go through these kinds of things, if you've experienced death, if you've experienced death at a young age, you're definitely not alone and you will never be alone because all of us have to go through it. And a lot of us are afraid of it, including me. As much as I can say that, oh, I'll be fine, and death doesn't scare me. It's the great unknown, and one of the ultimate truths. <laughs>